Now, artificial intelligence is having and is going to have a significant impact upon teaching and learning. Um, through this course, hopefully you've been getting some inkling into the potential for artificial intelligence to support your own teaching, but also your students' learning and how they go about learning processes. Now, this isn't without challenges. Um, some of the technologies aren't necessarily suited for primary school students at this stage. Um, they are more adult orientated or they don't have the child friendly um, safety environments to enable young children to engage with them. But that will come. And as they are being incorporated into all of our productivity tools from the office environment to our search engines to pretty much every tool that is available and also being incorporated into a lot of student or a lot of children's toys and games where they will be increasingly AI enabled. So children are going to be engaged with artificial intelligence, even if we weren't doing much in schools about that. But of course, we will be doing things in schools because it's very evident that AI technologies can be a great boon for teachers in reducing the work intensification that has been so evident in recent years. So we will be using AI as teachers and we will eventually be letting our students use AI more and more if they aren't already doing so at home. So there are a range of different aspects of AI though. <clears throat> so far we've been looking mostly at generative AI, which is the latest new thing in AI. But there are lots and lots of other aspects of artificial intelligence that students have been engaging with and have been being slowly incorporated into teaching and learning. Um, voice translation has been a really big thing, uh, quite overshadowed by generative AI, but the ability now to speak into a device and have it automatically translate and speak out in another language is a fantastic tool for language learning. So that's going to have a massive impact upon uh, foreign language engagement. But also just as the opportunity as a teacher, instead of having to only draw upon English speaking guest speakers, say do video conference in to speak to your class, you could bring in someone from another language and they could speak to your class through a translation device and the students would be able to hear that in English. Or if you've got students in your class from a range of different um, non-English speaking backgrounds, being able to utilize these devices to translate you into a language that they can understand, still supporting their development of, of um, English language learning. But if they're doing something particularly complex where they don't necessarily have the language skills yet to be able to understand what you're explaining, say in the sciences or history and some other areas, then they might be able to use these tools to assist them. And there's lots and lots of other AI tools coming from intelligent tutoring systems to uh, video recognition or facial recognition. So being able to have a device that you can set up on your desk and it will automatically mark the role for you and send that information through. So lots and lots of elements that are being incorporated. So have a look at the list of different aspects of artificial intelligence that will be impacting upon education and think about how you might be able to improve your own teaching and learning through the use of AI systems. Now, of course, one of the ones we've been emphasizing in the course has been generative AI using ChatGTP in particular. And there are a range of different roles that we can ask ChatGTP to undertake and to try out different pedagogical approaches from Socratic to being a guide, being a personal tutor, being a co-designer of, of lesson resources, but also students can use generative AI as a co-designer as they come up with their own solutions to problems. So lots and lots of different aspects that generative AI can assist with. But one of the key elements of generative AI is around prompts and what's called prompt engineering. So you, again, you've been seeing in this course various prompts, but how to structure those and um, frame them so that you get the best result out from your prompt. Um, there are a range of strategies emerging to assist with that. And one of these is called the create strategy, where the first aspect is you um, instruct the generative AI to take on a role, take on a character. So to be a, a policeman or to be a teacher or to be a historian 
or a scientist. So in how it presents itself in terms of the dialogue it produces, it will undertake that role. Then you provide a request. So something that you want it to do. So it might be to create a lesson plan or to assist students in understanding the water cycle as a, as a tutor. Then it often helps to provide examples. Of course, while regenerative AI will draw upon the entire internet, sometimes it will draw upon material that you don't necessarily want it to. So one way of assisting it in knowing what you want from it is to provide some examples. So it might be an example lesson plan. It might be an example letter to a parent. Or for a student, it might be an example um, paragraph for an, for an essay. And it will then use that in helping guide its advice and output. Then we often will need to provide some adjustments. So it may be that we want to have it so that it's really easy. The language it produces is really easy for a year four student to understand. So that means it won't incorporate complex words or it will simplify the, the language structure so it'll make it easier. So there's a whole range of things that we could ask it to um, adjust its output so that it better fits what we'd like. Then we frame the type of output. So what we would actually like it to produce. Is it a, um, a table? Is it a, um, an essay based, um, say, lesson plan? Does it have to be a certain word limit? Um, is it a step-by-step -step guide? So there's a whole range of different outputs that we can ask it to do. Is it a self-paced tutorial where it prompts the students for, it asks them to um, respond and the students will then ask it a question and then it will respond and and so forth as a tutoring system and then finally there may be some extras little additional things that you might want it to do one common one is to ask it to provide the output in uh, UK English so instead of US English so it provides the language a little bit better or you might ask it to explain how it came up with that response and justify the processes. Again, these can be helpful for your own understanding, but also for your students' understanding of what is being produced by generative AI. So think about the create process and see if you can come up with your own prompt for an activity you would do as a teacher, where it would save you time and provide you with a useful um, digital assistant in doing that task.